Hello and welcome back to day 20 of Mule 4 in depth training. So, today in this video, we'll understand how to use JMS endpoint to send and receive messages from a message broker. In this lecture, actually, I'll be using ActiveMQ as a message broker, but similar concepts will be applicable for any other broker. Okay, so let us get started. So, in this lab, I'll be using uh, Apache ActiveMQ as my message broker. The installation of Apache ActiveMQ is very simple. So you can just go to ActiveMQ website and you can download this zip file. So I have this zip file already downloaded. I will extract here. Okay, that's all. And if you want to start active MQ, it's very simple. You can just go into bin directory. Uh, mine is Windows 64, so I'll go to Windows 64. Take this CMD. Then I'll execute active MQ.bat. That's all. This will start. Oh, wait, I think I'll open my CMD again. Uh, here, I'll go to this. Okay. Go to this Windows 64. Ah, I'll cd to this. Then I'll just have to execute active mq.bat. That's all. This is start my active mq. Let's wait until it starts. Okay, it started. So actually, active mq will be having a web UI at 8161. So I'll just go to localhost 8161. Yeah. If I click on manage active MQ broker, it will ask me for username and password. The default username and password is admin admin. So I'm giving this admin admin. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'll go to queues. There are no queues. I want to create a queue with name in queue okay now I what I want to do is I want to send a message into this in queue through my mule flow let us see very simple so um, I would be working on JMS start project I have an XML already yep this XML is empty so firstly, what I want to do is I want to drag and drop a HTTP listener. Okay. And I want to configure it as usual uh, with 8081 port. So I'll take all the defaults and click on plus. And then I'll give the path as slash JMS send. Then I want to use JMS module and here you don't see any JMS module here. So I'll click on add modules and then I'll drag and drop JMS module. Yep, so it is added. Now I want to publish one message. So there is an operation called as publish. I'll drag and drop this publish. So here Again, I need to configure a JMS connector configuration. So I'll click on it. Mm, yep. So what I want is I can select what type of connection active MQ I want to select. And then here I need to add, add the jars, active MQ client jars. I'll configure to add a Maven dependency. Yep, here it is coming. I'll take the defaults or if you are not getting it you can just select search from here and then you can get it I have active MQ client configured finish so it should be automatically added in the build path okay then um, <coughs> I'll come down here actually if you have worked with um, JMS into config 
configure a connection factory here I'll configure uh, connection factory configuration I will edit in line mm, here I need to configure the broker URL if you are having a active MQ running in line that means uh, if it is running in the same JVM you can use VM colon colon slash slash localhost but I have uh, active MQ running externally so the standard value is TCP colon slash slash localhost colon 61616 so this is a URL at which broker is listening don't get confused actually 8161 is a web UI and 61616 is a broker URL so you can actually configure other things also if your broker is uh, protected with a username and password you can give username and password right so otherwise I'll take all the defaults right now I'll click OK then I want to send message to which destination I want to send to Q with the naming Q and the destination type is Q or topic I will select Q and then that's all I will not configure anything you can see that the body of the JMS message is configured to be payload body is payload whatever is the payload of the mule message that will be sent as body okay so that's it now i'll just run and check what will happen um, after this publish first of all i'll drag and drop the logger and here i want to print the payload what it is um, hash payload I'll simply write now let me run it and check okay so I need to give a request to Jameson so in this case I'll use postman to make a post request because whatever I send as post body will become the body of the JMS message because if you see in the published what should go as part of JMS message whatever is the payload so I'll make a post request using postman so whatever post body I'll send that should go as a body to JMS message let's observe okay so I'll give a request to slash JMS send and then I'll make it the post request and then the body raw I'll just send hello world send If I wait for response, still response is not coming. James send only, right? Yes. So I made a post request. Yep, I got the response. Same because I didn't do any transformation. Whatever published, it came as response. Now let us see the queue. I'll refresh. See in the in queue there is one pending message. I'll go to this in queue. I'll click on this message. Is it same hello world? yes so i'm able to send message by using publish operation on the jms
connected great now i want to listen for messages and get all the messages so if you want to listen for messages from broker in jms module there is a listener module so i just drag and drop listener again this i have used same connector and at which destination i want to listen i want to listen it in queue and uh, consumer type is uh, queue consumer that's all uh, i will not give right now anything here you can see the number of consumers as four that means concurrently four consumer threads will be polling for any messages in the jms broker okay once the jms message comes the listener will convert jms message to mule message and will kick off the flow uh, what i'll do is i'll just drag and drop a logger and i'll print here um, a message received and I'll concatenate plus plus fail that's all now let me run this better i'll stop and start again when it stops let it stop okay i'll run it again okay it started and you can see here there's a logger return received hello message hello world so automatically the message is received now i'll clear the console i'll go to here and i'll refresh now you can see that one message was in queue and one message was dequeued also and the number of pending messages is zero and number of consumers is four did you remember i configured uh, here for listener by default actually uh, number of consumers are Right now, for clarity, I'll make it as one. And if I restart, let me stop again. And I'll restart. We'll observe what will be the number of consumers. Okay, it started. Now let us observe here. Refresh. So you can see the number of consumers is one. That's okay. Now what I want to do is, um, there is a listener already started here and is continuously listening for messages. I want to send some dummy messages to in queue. So there is a link called as send it to here. I want to send some 50 messages to in queue and with text. Hello. Simple. Send. So now you can see that the 50 messages should come here. So we can see the 50 logs automatically got printed. Is it? But how many threads you can see? There are threads up to number 5, number 6 thread also is there. So almost I can say you can see up to 6 threads concurrently have processed all of your messages. So if I go and refresh here, zero messages pending. So all the messages were received and concurrently processed by multiple threads. Right. Now, that's fine. Listener is there and I have published. But this publish one, what it is doing is it's just publishing. It's not waiting for response. What I want to do is I want to send a message and I want to wait for response. So in such cases, you should not use publish. I'll delete this publish. You should just publish consume. You want to publish and wait for response. So here I'll double click on publish consume and destination is in queue. Okay. Now let me run this. Again, I'll stop and start. So in this case, what am I expecting? It should publish the message to in queue and wait for response. Okay. 
So what I want to do is to simulate a response um, after this listener. I will just drag and drop a transformer. Maybe a simple transformer I want append to append a string. Um, or Simply, I'll drag and drop set payload. Simply, um, payload is payload plus plus. I'll concatenating it with response. So once the message comes, the the message is transformed to response, and this should be sent as response. Now I will restart. Okay, so to test what I'll do is I'll send one message using Postman. Hello world. And let us see what response I'll get. Okay, response is hello world. Response. And if I see the console. Here, the receiver flow is printing received and hello response, right? Okay, but how did the response come? Publish consume component is publishing a message and waiting for response in a temporary response queue, reply queue, sorry, temporary reply queue. Did I configure reply to somewhere here? No, it is none. I can even configure my own reply queue. If I don't configure reply to header, what will happen? A temporary queue will be created and the response comes to temporary queue and temporary queue will be deleted. Now, I want to configure reply to, I will edit in line. Destination is my reply queue. So I'm saying I want response in my reply queue. Okay. Now let me restart. I'll stop and start again for clarity. Running again. Okay. So again, I'll give a get request, uh, sorry, post request of this. Same thing. Yep, I got the response. But now let us see the console. Again, it is same. But now let us see here on the active MQ. Is there my reply queue created right now? Yes, the reply actually came here. It was in queued and it was dequeued also. So here in publish consume, if you want response, if you want reply, in some reply queue, your own reply queue, you can configure reply to and specify the queue. Otherwise, if you don't configure, that means if I just configure none, then in such cases, the reply will, will go to some temporary queue. This publish consume component is going to create one temporary queue, wait for response inside. Okay, then this JMS listener will send the response back to that K1 queue. Okay. Okay, I want to tell you one more feature. In JMS listener, uh, this will be listening for all the messages we have configured to listen for all the messages of in queue. But I don't want to uh, receive all the messages which are coming to in queue. I want to select based on some 
selection criteria. I want to select messages only which are having some, let's say, some headers. Uh, take an example, every message also has a priority, right? I want this JMS listener to select only the messages with priority, let's say, 8. What to do? So, what I can do is in the selector, I can specify here selector JMS priority is equals to, let's say, 8. That's all. Now, this flow will receive only the messages with priority 8. Let us see. I will run. In the meanwhile, I will try to send one message with priority to in queue. So, I will go to queues. There are zero messages in in queue right now. I will click on send to, to in queue. One message I want to send and priority 8. I'll just send a message, something like a a a a. Send. Okay. Still starting up. Uh, I'll just wait. Okay. So reset consumed. I'll refresh. Still here. Uh, what I did is I configured this message. Oh. I think I gave a reply to it. Okay. It was wrong message, so maybe I'll just uh, purge all or delete this. I'll create one more queue in queue. Now, to be very clear, we'll send to in queue, and I think where's priority? Yeah, here by mistake earlier I configured in reply to here I give priority eight. Now I'll send uh, a message. A -A -A -A. Now this should be automatically consumed. Let us see. Yeah, so number of pending messages zero, and I should see that it is consumed. Right, okay. Now what I'll do is I'll send one message with some other priority. With priority, say seven. I'll send the message as something like BBB. Okay. This should not be consumed. Right? So I configured my JMS listener with a JMS selector to selectively receive messages with these properties. So I just gave an example of JMS priority. You can use any of the message property to select. Okay, so I hope you understood what is a JMS selector. Okay, you have reached the end of this lecture. What you can do is now, um, you can go to my GitHub repository, day 20. Here you have this document. Follow the instructions given in this document and complete this exercise before moving on to the next topic. So this video is a short video, less than 30 minutes. Try to complete it. And if you have anything pending from previous days, you can just utilize this time today and uh, be ready for tomorrow. I'll meet you in day 21. See you.